We will now going to do some more form elements so that you could get to see as you will going to need quite a few form elements in your project depending on the nature of the project as well. Uh, so we're now going to create a new web page. It will be an HTML page in which we will going to learn about the select form item. That if you have a drop down box with values and you want to process that information. Form action equals to process form one dot JSP where method is post. Select role, oh sorry, name equals to role. Option value equals to admin. Now let's say if you are creating like one of the students in the other advanced Java class, uh, they're building a login form with roles incorporated. So if your role is in that of an admin, you'll be redirected to a different portal than non-admin. So in that case, you want to pass a value through a drop-down box, and then based on the role, you want to redirect people to different sites. Okay, so in those sites which are meant for admin, you need to make sure uh, that those sites are only accessible by sessions who are in session and they are role as admin. Just so that, you know, anybody in session, if they save a URL, will not be able to access it. So we will now going to create our new page, process form one. So we're going to create a new web page, processform1.jsp. And in the processform1.jsp, we'll simply ask request.getParameter and role, that's the name of the element that I'm reading. So if role.equals admin, out.println admin site. Now, of course, I'm doing out.println. In, uh, in a regular site, you will have your redirect operation here, response.redirect. Else if role.equals staff side so now when you're running this page based on the nature of the value that you provide through a drop down you're going to get different outputs <clears throat> so 
So now when you're done, you start running select form item.html. That's a page that you run on the server. And then you make a choice, and then you ask to be redirected, and I'm going to give you an option based on your choice. So that's how you can grab a value through request.get parameter from a select, just like you would grab it from a password or username. Our next example that we'll do will incorporate checkboxes and radio buttons. What's the purpose of a checkbox versus radio button? Radio button allows you to only select one of the many choices, and checkbox allows you to select one or more choices. So when you pass a checkbox, it actually is received as an array because there are multiple items connected to the same name. And radio buttons are received as a single value. Is everybody done with this one? Okay. So in our next example, we're going to actually create a post back form. So let's call this one radio button and checkbox dot JSP. Radio button and checkboxes. Boxes. So now I will create a form where the action of the form will going to be a post back to the same page. So you have a radio button and check boxes dot JSP. gender input type equals to radio name equals to gender and value equals to female copy paste and for radio buttons, for you to be able to select one of the many choices, you have to make sure that they're all named the same. Otherwise, you can, you'll end up selecting all the radio boxes, uh, radio buttons. What types of books do you read? Now, instead of radio button, I want to use a checkbox. Name is book. And always remember, the value that you provide in value is the value that gets sent over to the server. The text that you write outside is, not, is only for the user to see on the screen. So it's quite possible for you to have different value and a different text, like we had in the administrator and admin in our previous example. Then in the drop-down box, I had admin inside and administrator outside. Now, since the same page serves as the input and the output, so it's a post back page, therefore, the same page, I'm going to write my JSP code.
So I'm running it on server. As I choose a gender and I choose book types, notice at the bottom it right now says gender null book types you read null. Submit and now it says the book types that are read. However, you will notice that it doesn't display multiple book types. Even if I pick multiple book types, it only displays one, which is the first one from the list. So we're going to be fixing that in the next cycle. Also, you will notice that by default, it displays gender null and book types you read null, correct? Even though I'm saying if gender not equals to null, only then display it. Because in this case, it requires you to put curly braces. Otherwise, it can't sense out of it. If you put curly braces, only then he knows, oh, this statement is within this block. That's why in JSP, now writing curly braces becomes a requirement. Otherwise, when you break a scriptlet, it, it, can't, it can't tell what, who is inside who. And now let me also put a break row here so that it gets to display on a different line. So now when I run a radio button checkboxes example again, this time it will not display anything at the bottom because my null is active. Now when I make a choice and I hit submit, now it displays me. But I still need to fix the other problem that I have. Which is I want to be able to display all the books that I'm reading. Okay, now what did I tell you when you have check boxes with same name, it returns an array, right? So in JSP, when you say get parameter, it only gives you the first value out of an array. If you want to read the whole array, you say get parameter values. Okay, get parameter values. Now, on the receiving side, you now need an array. That's why in the books, we'll now have square brackets. So books will have square brackets to tell that it's an array and you will see you'll use get parameter values so that it returns the whole array. Okay. Now you will make sure that book is not equals to null and books dot length is also not equals to zero. That means there are items more than one, uh, sorry, more than zero items. Now, you can say books type you read, and now you can start a loop after that. Okay, so you have to loop through all the values in the array. So for integer i equals to zero, i should be less than books dot length, I plus plus. So the same logic that you learn in Java 1, you still got to follow the same logic here. That when you start out with an array, you can go through the entire list of the array, okay? Out dot print ln. Books I. Br. So my for loop is within my if condition. So if, if condition is false, for loop will not run. Mm -hmm. 
So now when I refresh my page, I can get to see all items. Okay. The only thing I'll do different here is I'll switch the position of my BR. So if I pick a gender and I choose books and I hit submit and here I go I can get to see a list of them and I can get to see the gender. So this allows me to traverse through the whole array. So again? Oh. Now what I would like to do is I want my books to be display in a bulleted list. So for that purpose I will start an unordered list or an ordered list outside of the loop. So before I enter the loop I'm going to start my ordered list. Inside the loop I will going to generate my LIs. And then right after the loop before the if condition closes I will going to close out my OL so I start my OL before the for loop I close my OL after the for loop and in the body of the for loop I generate the list items so now when I refresh I get one two three because of the ordered list and I can use UL for unordered list 